first day at public school. It was sixth or seventh grade. And I wore like all black and chains. <laughs> I had purple hair. Hell yeah. And my mom just like remembers pulling up thinking like, oh God, I hope she's okay. I hope <laughs> she's going to be okay. Because no one understood yeah, any yeah. of that stuff back uh -huh. then. And you were watching like movies that came out like 10 years ago thinking they were current. In a, in a sense, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, there's just no one. But I do remember my mom saw, she was like, terrified of dropping me off and then she saw one guy wearing black with like a green mohawk and she's like oh thank god okay <laughs> and then sure enough me and the guy like became great friends yeah was there a movie theater on that island or no yes but it smelt like popcorn and vomit oh it was like a sex theater it was like <laughs> pretty nasty that's nasty yeah i when i was growing up it was like the heyday of blockbuster mm -hmm. and um we had a family video. They, um, they, I think they just went out of business, but not family video, but but it was either like drive all the way into town to go to Blockbuster, yeah. and that was like a special event because it was stock like up. half an hour away, mm -hmm. or it was like the little dinky, dirty, dusty, like <laughs> hole in the wall place. Yeah, yeah. you just find a tape in the on like off the curb, and then generally we would just go back and forth to whichever one like we had the least amount of late fees. At. <laughs> yeah. Did you have friends that you left Hawaii with, or did you dip out on your own? Um, no. Well, at the time, I was with my ex, mm. so we moved out together. Oh, yeah. But we moved um, to Oahu for a year mm. because that was kind of like a little stepping stone yeah. from like like nowhere country, sure. living in the bushes to it's somewhat of step for you, yeah. city, city life, and then... From there, I was able to go to California. But I'm originally, fr like, I was born in L.A. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I would always kind of visit during mm -hmm. summers. But, yeah, it was always the goal to come here. When I was in Hawaii, I... Oh, yeah, did you go to Maui? I was in Kauai. Kauai, Kauai. I fucking love Kauai. It's, it's so nice. It's so beautiful out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I was out there, I just never want to fucking leave. Because you surf, right? I do. I'm not very good. I mean, dude, the people and the waves in Hawaii are like, if you don't, if you can't hold your own, you're going to die. You're going to drown. You know? Either that or the sharks will get you. Yeah. Well, did you ever, um, did you ever like go growing up, like go on like a charter boat or anything, go out fishing? Was your dad a big fisherman growing up at all? Um, no, my dad hates fishing. He yeah. thinks it's really boring. I would agree with that. My dad's more of like us, lay he's, back and drink his Heineken. Man. Like, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, how... So is your were your parents together growing up or they were until I think oh, like eleven mm. and then they split. My mom was an artist. My dad um, just he worked all the time. Yeah. Um, but they both were into Polynesian culture. They were both dancers. My dad's like a fire mm. knife uh, dancer yeah, and drummer, yeah. and then my mom was a Tahitian Polynesian dancer. So you inherited that that passion from them. Yeah. That's pretty sick. So it was kind of like cool growing up and seeing them perform and dance together uh -huh. and um, seeing my dad dance with fire. And Do you swallow swords too? No. no. I you don't. Ever no. That is it all? Is that, a, is that a like, gimmick? Nah. Is that a fake thing? Is it like a. F From what I've heard, no, it's no. not. It's like. Do they dull the blades or like. Well, the blades are not sharp. Yeah. But um, this one trick that I was working with she was like no you just it's like any other s skill mm -hmm. it's not just something that I happen to be able to do it's like no this is a trained like thing yeah. that I can so it's like um have you ever been to a circus a circus yeah like a, um, like a I guess not like a fair yeah no I've, I think like, like at a very young age I went to a circus show but I feel like... It seems kind of a dying breed. Yeah, but I used to perform a lot with circus people. Yeah. And, and, like and a lot of... lady. Yeah, like <laughs> I've done a lot of shows with um, sword swallowers, contortionists, mm -hmm. stilt walkers, um, aerialists. The trapeze dudes. Yeah. Yeah, I saw... Um, I was in Vegas a year or so ago, and I went to the circus Olay. 
Uh, I guess that I is kind of the, the last bastion of circusdom yeah. that is respectable. Because it's like there is so many aspects of the the golden era of circus tree, circus mm-hmm. circus tree that would travel sure. through the U.S. Sure, yeah. And um, I mean, it was all like abusing like mm-hmm. elephants and shit. Yeah, like animal <laughs> cruelty. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. sad. And that's like, um, uh, what's the word? Like aqua parks. Why yeah, it's like Sea World and Sea World. Yeah, and like like that's so frowned on. Yeah, just like poor on. little orcas. Just hanging out. I know. I even like remember growing up and going to the Hilton on the other side of the island and being so excited because mm-hmm. you get to go see the dolphins and like they have oh, like yeah. the paid dolphin swim experience. Uh-huh. I've done that before. But they're like <laughs> not actually free. They're like in cages. No, yeah. They're it's very sad. They're prisoners, a hundred percent. When I was a kid, and I guess I guess this might be what gets me canceled. But I was like six or seven. And we uh, we swam with the dolphins in Mexico. It was like mm. a family vacation, which, were, which was a rare occasion. And um, yeah, it was like middle of like some bay. And this dude was like, he, I don't know. It wasn't like a SeaWorld uh, area. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He just had these two dolphins that he worked with in this, mm. in this bay. And you'd go swim out in the middle and he would give you a couple fish to like mm-hmm. kind of entice the dolphins. But they were held within this bay? Yeah, they were kind of trapped. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he was just like... <laughs> he was he was, a, he was like prison guard or something. He literally you know? came up with this plan. He's yeah, like, dude. I'm going to trap these He's an entrepreneur. Dolphins. That's what wow. he was. But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and he would have you... Um, he would have you basically try and stand still like in the water like... Almost like you're on the cross, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And these two dolphins would come and lift you and glide you across the bay off your feet. And you were you were just gliding like mm-hmm. like the Lord and Savior, you know? Like, just <laughs> Is that like, how you felt? <laughs> dude, I felt like a god. And um, it was fucking awesome. And I, I think about that often, honestly. Because there's a photo of it somewhere. See, growing up in Hawaii, we would swim with the dolphins, but they were wild. Yeah. So, like, there was this one beach that we would always go and camp at, and we would just swim really fucking far mm. out. And now, as an adult, I would never do that because my fear is, you like... You tide or something. Well, you just realize that, like, like death is real and you're not going to live forever, yeah, yeah, whereas yeah. a kid, you feel invincible. So, like, we would swim miles out where you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. You look down, and it's just sand for miles, and it's gorgeous, but it's just abyss and then these dolphins come and you swim and with like them and there's like 50 of them yeah there's a ton they're not the like bottlenose dolphins okay. that we're all familiar with which are like the mainstream with. dolph yeah. yeah these were like the little spinner dolphins okay very playful but I remember reading um, I read this book about the USS Indianapolis which was a, a ship from World War II mm-hmm. and it went down from like I think it was like torpedoes, kam- kamikaze and shit, but it was like 300 sa- uh, sailors were in the water with no ships around. And almost like all of them were eaten by sharks. Almost like every one of them. And I and they made some movie about it, I, I'm pretty sure. Of course they did. Yeah, I mean, it's like, that is, that is cinema. For us old. in the future to be entertained <laughs> by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just see your great-grandpa getting eaten alive. On the big screen. And they make it like as gory as possible. <laughs> yeah. Before you dove into um, the movie biz, I suppose. Did you did you have any like backup plans or career paths that were like, I could do this, you know? Mm. Or was it always like dead set focus? I always just wanted to be a director and writer. Yeah. I, my grandfather was a filmmaker Mm -hmm. and uh, he just would always tell me all these stories about his career and I was always so like Mm. wow wait he was he was an actor he was a filmmaker okay so he was a director and producer and editor and he did stuff for like Disney and document documentaries like traveling Africa like he was like the legit old school like Mm. heyday 
filmmaker and artist and you know he would tell me all these stories that 100% we would never get away with now like yeah. Like asbestos he, for snow and like Wizard of Oz and shit. Well, and he, he'd be like, oh, yeah, for the picture we had, um, what was it? Seals or something. We just had to <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. them in our pool for a day. <laughs> or like we were filming with a leopard and we yeah, just like yeah, yeah. had to have it chill in a cage in our house for a day. I'm like, that would never happen now. I love that. Um, yeah, everything is CGI now. But I love yeah. the idea of um, like tamed bears and mm -hmm. lions being used for productions. And like the the weight that is on that trainer's shoulders mm -hmm. to make sure no actor just gets ripped to shreds. Yeah, and it's really expensive too. Like, <laughs> have you ever have you ever been on a set that used any animals like that? Not a bear, but tigers, mm. wolves. What, what was the the southern tiger guy called? Was oh, uh, can't remember his name. Uh, tiger King. Yeah, the Tiger King. Yeah, but um. But it was like the same thing. Uh, it's some shitty tiger show, and I want to say like Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And one, of, it was like Bengal, like those white mm -hmm. Bengal tigers, mm -hmm. tigers, kind of like the, like I'm sure they do the same shit in Vegas, still low key. But it was like, dude, it just like it jumped on the fucking guy mm -hmm. and just bit down, and everyone's like, I mean, trying to pry the jaws. Of, yeah, no. A full grown can't. tiger. No, yeah. Good luck. But it's like, what do you think is gonna happen? Yeah, dude. They're they're predators. They're made to do that. Yeah. That's why I like I've made a um a point and try to make a point that every time I travel, like I will never pay for anything with animals. <laughs> mm, yeah. I like unless that. it's like in the wild and you know you're not encroaching on their environment or affecting them in any mm. way, but like Taking pictures with tigers is terrible. Yeah. Like elephant rides like, are like bad a, unless you do a ton of research to find out the right ones. Like right. All of that. Did you, you remember um, Cecil the lion getting murdered by that dentist? Mm-mm. It was like that big story. It was probably like five years ago. But like in Africa, you could, you still can because there's, there's like a conservation aspect to it where... You pay like 10 grand to this village to kind of keep the population of a certain animal intact or mm -hmm. or like there's a dying animal and you have some rich white guy come to pay you to kill it and take a photo yes. of it. Yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, this dentist, he got his whole like practice just collapsed from it. <laughs> Because <laughs> because he posted photos on Facebook and everyone was like, "What the fuck are you doing, dude?" There's such controversy over it. Like to me, it's pretty I don't know obvious um, that that's wrong. But um, I've gotten into some arguments with hunters. How do you feel about like meat eating? I am a, well. Okay, I've been I grew up as a meat eater because yeah. my father just steak and rice, sure, chicken and rice, whatever. Spam, but dude, spam is delicious, disgusting, but tastes so good. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Yeah, the fact so that it's in nasty. a can is off putting. Well, it was literally made during the war because right. no one could afford real yeah, food. I love it. It's, I mean, a spam noose be that was to die for, but uh, yeah, so I grew up eating meat and then I started doing research and realizing how mm -hmm. fucked up everything is. It and is then, fucked up. I became vegan for a little bit and then vegetarian and then pescatarian. And then now I'm kind of like, I am only eating things that I feel I do the research on or like, mm. like I'll eat beef occasionally, but I will never like buy it myself. It's only like, like, for example, I went to a friend's birthday and, um, one of my good friends spent like 18 hours making this roast mm. and I wasn't, you know, like I could like not you know, eat it, but didn't you? I knew that it was like locally sourced. I knew that it was a happy, yeah, like, I respect that. Did you ever go to like a, is this like a, a, a West, like a, a white person thing now, like a luau back in Hawaii or is like, has that been a totally adopted and exploited? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
I mean, people still do the whole... Um, the roasting a pig. And yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, can't be, dude, pork belly. Yeah, but it's not like everyone just sits in the backyard and, like, yeah, yeah. dances Dance, hula. Dances hula. It, is, it is a bizarre uh, thing, like, the white... Like white people go there expecting to see this culture just like pushed in their face or something. Well, that's anywhere you go, and yeah. I, I think it's. I don't know. There's like a fine line of, um, like expecting <laughs> it, but also just like wanting to celebrate yeah, the yeah. culture. I you're think in. It, yeah, I think it's it's more so celebrated. At least when I went there, I loved seeing all that stuff yeah because it's like you know you go to spain and yeah you want to see like the running of the bulls and shit yeah you want to go like to which, a, is, which is its own debacle of a situation yeah i don't like that i think it's very sad <laughs> yeah dude i love watching videos of people getting destroyed by see, the bulls. that <laughs> i will watch <laughs> yeah. i am all for watching humans getting fucked over by animals yeah, dude, but when, I, mean, <laughs> when <laughs> I see animals getting fucked over yeah. by humans i'm like no i know but I, I love, um, I'm a big fan of watching, uh, like, those YouTube compilations of people just getting wrecked. Like, car crashes of, of pe <laughs> like people, you? like, Russian car crashes are hilarious, dude. You're just, it, like, in here watching videos <laughs> of humans. Yeah, getting nothing done all day. Well, the thing, in Russia, like, everyone has a dash cam because everyone is a terrible really? driver. Mm. And so there's so much great footage. Interesting, there's interesting. So I did not footage. know this. Yeah. And um, honestly, it's a great idea to have a dash cam. Mm -hmm. Especially in LA. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. My, well, any Uber driver should definitely oh, yeah. have a dash cam. I remember I was in an Uber recently and uh, the dude was talking to me. I don't know how we got on this, this subject, but he was talking about how... Uh, You'd be surprised how many people get in his car and just start doing drugs in the back of his car. As if as if he is just a normal, like, cab or something. Yeah. You know, like, not to say, like, you get in a cab and it's okay to do drugs in the back. Yeah. But, it, like, it's just a guy, you know, who's just trying to make a quick buck, you know? Well, the worst is, like, I've gotten into Ubers and I'm like, um, excuse me, sir, do you realize you have, like, empty beer bottles back here <laughs> and he's like fuck oh no it's yeah like, I that. yeah Sucks. some some uber drivers too t will tell you their whole life story yes and it's so unnecessary yes and then i feel like i never want to be that passenger that also <laughs> like sits yeah. there and tells the uber driver your life yeah. story i like to um i don't know it depends on my mood but sometimes i like to playfully banter with the uber driver Play what? Like playfully banter with them, oh, just yeah, kind yeah. of like prod, prod into into their lives a little bit. Because I thinking from their perspective, if you're driving all day, mm -hmm. and I think the standard passenger doesn't want to talk to you, yeah. So going through your whole day, not speaking, yeah, it's gotta drive you a little insane. So are you when you get in an Uber? Are you a talker or? A I um, I do like to talk to them, just because I. I feel bad sometimes. Isn't there like a a mode on your app on the Probably. app that you can you say if you don't, want quiet don't or not? Don't fucking talk to me. Yeah, you don't want to go in into the cab and say don't fucking speak to me. Yeah, it's you don't just kind of like it should already be there yeah. in the room. Just <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, if you get in a cab, odds are the guy doesn't know how to speak to you. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't speak much English half the time. Well, it's interesting because, like, I do like talking to people. Uh -huh. But for some reason, when I get in an Uber, like, I usually just don't want to talk. Yeah. I mean, some of them are creepy. Yeah. I've had Uber drivers, like, ask for my number. Uh, I'm just like, really? Yeah, dude. But. Um, it's not the most attractive career to uh, be like, damn. Yeah. This one's a sexy Uber driver. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it is it is interesting because you get to hear like I mean, no one wants to be an Uber driver as a career. Yeah. Like so you always I mean, see, some people, you know, they have they love driving, you know. Right? Yeah, but there's always like you know, the guy you that's think, telling think, you about farther. his yeah. band or there's the guy that's right. telling you about his, you know, last night getting fucked up. Yeah. Like 
the the last Uber I had was after getting off a red eye and I was extremely tired, did not sleep at all. Mm-hmm. I'm a terrible flyer. Yeah, I hate too. flying. I like cried, definitely cried during I don't, that I don't mind it, but I, I can't sleep on the plane very well. Oh, I think we're like dying. Like every bump, I like think yeah. I'm dead. Oh, so you're like, you, so need, like a, you like need a Xanax. A Xanax or like it. several wines. Damn. Yeah. So you spend like $30 on like a glass of wine and, and your flight. Yeah. Or you smuggle it on. Well, actually no, free drinks on flights. Yeah, I feel like they charge you. I guess you can, Well, if you're paying first class. Mm, are you a co- I just a coach only girl? fly Delta. Oh, okay. So are you... Um, so I like got status and now I get free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so so do you um are you like clenching your fucking armrest the oh, whole flight? Oh, 100%. I'm really? telling you, I cried. <laughs> it's no, like, no way. I can just start crying. I just can't help <laughs> so, it. I have my like Russell Brand uh <laughs> meditation on. Oh, that's cute. I love <laughs> Russell Brand. <laughs> I have to listen to him. <laughs> And then, yeah, so that was terrible. And then I got into the Uber and this guy was like, just so full of energy, full of life. I appreciated it. But then he started talking to me about like his side hustle and it's like music uh-huh. and he's like playing me all this music. And like, oh, I fucking loved the music. It was great. Yeah. I was genuine. I was really into it, but mm. I was so tired. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I have to like keep this up for... An hour home. Right. Because like, if you are a decent human being, you aren't keen on being rude. You yeah, know? no, I'm not going to shut him down. You're not going to be but... like, dude, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and that's really all you need to do. Yeah. But also, too, like, I think Uber drivers can rate you. Can they? I think yes, you, they can. you as a passenger can be rated. I wonder what my but, rating but is. But no, you can't see it. Only really? the drivers can see that. Just like you can see see them, you know? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that's a thing. And um, I'm looking at Brandon because I'm curious. <laughs> but yeah, like if you were... I feel like uh, I have shit ratings then. I bet you have a shit rating. Honestly, probably I would rate do. you pretty low. <laughs> I mean, not from like race recently, but from like my early 20s, definitely. Mm, getting in like wasted as fuck every time. 100%. Because that's when most people Uber is yeah. when they're drinking. drinking. Yeah, yeah. So probably like wasted or blacked out, fighting with my boyfriend. Like, <laughs> yeah. Tell me, tell me about how did you and Taylor meet? I guess I vaguely know, like it was a DM situation. But you guys work together, right? Um, yes, we work together. He is a producer. Yeah, Taylor Vandegrift is a badass. He is producer extraordinaire. Um. But yeah, we met on set and it was really cute. I oh, was a oh, fire dancer and oh yeah, he was producing it and he messaged me and I was like, "I'm sorry, who are you?" He's like, "I'm the producer of the shoot that you were on." I was like, Whoop. "The DMs, the odds of the DM working is a low one." Oh yeah, but because I was just talking about this with a guest, um, she's a singer and she's saying she gets about fifty DMs from thirsty boys every month. Like, if, if you were Adam Levine, mm-hmm. he's probably getting hundreds oh, of those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crazies. But you can't, for sure. you can't act on it um, or you get nothing done. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? yeah, no. You know, in, in person, you would respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, like, you just, you cannot. You cannot. You, should, you know what I think? If I was in that position, just put, like, a... Uh, Put your Venmo down, ten dollars mm-hmm. for a response or something. Someone's gonna pay you eventually. Or, well, or, isn't that uh, OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that was my first my first guest worked on OnlyFans actually, but they were talking about there's a demographic of men who will pay mm-hmm. for just to speak to you. Oh yeah, I've gotten those DMs like, hey, I'll give you a weekly allowance if you um, yeah. talk to me. And it's it was just strictly on uh-huh. on social. Like I didn't even Dude. have to like talk to him in person. And I sent it to Taylor. I was like, should I take them off on this? <laughs> Dude, I w- <laughs> Dude, and it's like the lowest effort ever for a quick buck. Yeah. Or yeah, just having like, I think the feet pics is the funniest thing because it's like so weird. it's so weird and like uh, just Google pictures of yeah, feet. I know. I I feel like they have to put a face to them. To get Maybe. off, get off on it, but I think 
Yeah, just like if you just shot a photo of your fucking feet every day. Yeah. And then when those fuckers do infiltrate your yeah. DM. You're just like, you I've got, got, you got, got them a back, You got them backlogged. Of- <laughs> you have the portfolio. And it's just, yeah, it's just a little side hustle you got going. In your, on your website, you just have the feet tab right next to the about me. And right next to the, port- Charge <laughs> the movie portfolio. Honestly, yeah. I feel like I've gotten those requests before. And I'm just like so taken aback by it. Well, the, like don't even know how to respond. Well, do I don't you, respond. But yeah, still, you shouldn't. Like, you shouldn't. No. Because then those people don't stop coming. But um, yeah, like the the sugar daddy aspect of... of uh, Would you take a sugar mama? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> There's no hesitation in that. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, rent is, is expensive. Yeah. Have what if it. there was like requirements? Yeah, I mean, what are the requirements? Like sexual favors. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it depends. You know, if she's like 90 years old, I'd probably cut off at 60. Yeah. What if it was someone like you really weren't attracted to? Yeah. Them? Like it depends what the allowance is. Like, usually, in my mind, and this is probably wrong, but, like, a sugar daddy mm-hmm. scenario is, like, yeah. there's no way I would be attracted to that person. Right. And yeah. usually, I feel like women aren't attracted to their sugar daddies. I could be wrong. No, but, totally. Well, so, well, like, as a, a, a man, I'm wondering, is, like... I'm, yeah, I think I would be totally for it. I when I mean, you have to think about like there are like you know um remember Dan Bilzerian you know mm-hmm. that that fucking asshole mm-hmm. I mean like all the he was kind of a sugar daddy in his own way with all those women being around him like paying for their food and and Well I feel like that happens all the time Yeah like yeah. just being with a rich man to be taken care of mm-hmm. is not rare no, not at all. And but yeah, vice versa. Like like the pool boy mm-hmm. is maybe I don't know. There's more of a taboo around it. It's just not seen as often. But I'm I'm here for it. Yeah. And um, it depends. Again, yeah, the amount of favors and the allowance. I'm well, pro- I'm probably on the cheaper side too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, cougars. <laughs> yeah. A slide on in. If you need someone. <laughs> yeah, um, the sugar. But, yeah, I always said that if things didn't work out the way that I planned, like married with kids, uh-huh. I would just become a fucking raging cougar. Oh, yeah, dude. I would just have, like, 20 cats, tons of rings mm. and jewelry, crazy hair, uh-huh. and then, like, just have... 20 cats? Probably, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's disgusting. And Your house would, just would smell be a like piss, dude. <laughs> no, really, I'd have very trained cats. Cats no. are very, very clean. Oh, you need, and then you need twenty fucking like litter boxes. Look, you, here. Need, well, you don't sound like a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm honestly not a cat person. You just haven't had the right cat, okay? Yeah, cat. I've talked with a few people about the cat situation, and it's like a 50-50 chance of the cat not giving a fuck about you. I don't know. My sister has a cat. She just left an hour ago. And she's kind of trained him to be like a dog. Like she takes her for walks. And Yeah. Uh, and uh, Cats are like dogs. There's more research coming out that cats are like just as loyal and Yeah. Um I like feel like the companionship there is. I feel like I've just seen a handful of cats growing up that just like either live like secluded in some area of the home where you don't even know where they are. Mm -hmm. And it's like as if they weren't there. And it's like, why would I want? Well, there's a preconception with cats. that That's what a cat is. But if you go into a cat relationship, treating it like you would treat a dog, train it, Uh like teach it to be social. What's the name of your cat again? We call him Scooter, but his name is Ollie. (laughs) Ollie Kayaka. (laughs) Scooter Ollie Kayaka. Yeah. What is Kayaka Hawaiian for something? Um, little Shadow. Oh, <laughs> I like that. He's a black cat, That's and he cute. literally follows us, and he looks like a little shadow. How old is he? He's gonna be three. Oh, he's a baby. But he is our child. We fly with him. We don't travel without. Oh him. yeah, like in a little bag. You yeah. don't like hide him in your carry on or anything. No, he's just 
He's the best little traveler. Dude, when I when I got Rosie, which is which is its own story. Um but I flew Rosie home from Chicago to LA. Did she have to be so yeah under I, the So she was like seven months old? Oh my god. No, 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 seven weeks old. And she sorry, was, but your dog was insane. Yeah. <laughs> she's a psychopath, but she's adorable. And yeah. um but she yeah, so I go to the airport and I have a crate for her. And I go to, up to I think it was um, American Airlines and they had some requirement that the crate had to fit under the seat in front of you. And mine was like, and mine was like an inch taller and like they measured it and shit. And they're like, Hey, there's nothing we can do. You can't get on this flight with this dog. And so I canceled the flight, lost all that money. And I was, I was fucking pissed. And then I, and, and there was another requirement where the dog had to be eight, weeks old like you had to have yeah paperwork for it and she was yeah. she was seven vaccinated and all that yeah and she wasn't really like any of that yet. yeah and um and so i forged all those documents nice <laughs> went to another airline bought a ticket and uh basically like smuggled her in like didn't show the dog mm-hmm. um to to the person at the front nice room. love it and so, but I had the documents, and then I went when I got to the TSA. They looked at it, and it was fine. Like mm-hmm. they're just like, you know, they just want people to fucking move along. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I got on to the flight with Rosie. And How long was this flight? It was like four or five hours. Okay. And yeah, dude, she she did not want to be in the crate. She was crying, and it was breaking my heart. And uh, I eventually like took her out, and I was holding her, and she pissed all over me. All over me, and the and the and the dude next to me was like appalled and disgusted. <laughs> like, oh my god! And he he sucks. asked he asked to move, and then I brought her to the to the the bathroom mid flight to like kind of like wash myself and her off, and then I go back sit down in my seat, which is covered in piss, <laughs> and oh uh, so I'm sitting in piss for four hours, and um, and the the flight attendant walks up to me and she's like. I can't believe you just brought that dog in the bathroom that is incredibly unsanitary. And if you do it's that, it's a I, fucking bathroom. I know. I'm like, there's a hundred people using the same bathroom. Of course, it's unsanitary. You know, it's a dog. You know, and, and, yeah. And I'm like, dude, what are you gonna fucking do? Kick me off mid flight? You know, <laughs> like, like I have nothing to lose at this point. You yeah, know? I just want to fucking get. You're like either way, I'm getting to my destination. Yeah, yeah. So hate me or not. Yeah, I don't dude. care. She just gave me a parachute and kicked me out. You know. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was a thing? I hope I hope that becomes a thing someday, like a, like a little airlock. Yeah, like where if, someone's too rowdy. Yeah, like if you really fuck up, they're gonna kick you off the plane. That was kind of the funny thing about the COVID, uh, the COVID era. There were so many videos of people who were like just going nuclear on the plane over the mask situation. Yeah, and just getting and just showing the worst colors, you know. I'm so glad that it's over. I mean, to some extent, but it's, yeah, it's not. It's not even. I think there's still crazies who get on and they see people wearing a mask. Like mm-hmm. it's like one or two people, and yeah. they like berate them for no reason because they're yeah. so brainwashed. I mean, I mean, just do whatever the fuck you want to do. Wear a mask or don't. But what I like the 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 one time that when I see people wearing masks, I'm like, why? Yeah, at this Is point. In, yeah. Well, hot yoga. Oh, yeah. So dude. I'm going to do hot yoga, Can and I see people that. with masks on. I'm like, do you want to die? Dude, I, I'm i pretty sure I got my first COVID. Um, like, I got sick from COVID from going to hot yoga. Oh, absolutely. The first time. I mean, when you're, like, breathing cycled yeah, sweat Yeah, ev- everyone's just particles. breathing in the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember, like, right when I got home, although it could have been... I was sick already, and then I brought it there, and I gave it everyone. But but when I got yeah, home, maybe it was you. Yeah, I might have been patient zero <laughs> in that situation. But yeah, I remember getting home and feeling just like like I was melting. And then I remember the second time I got COVID was New Year's Eve last year. Same. Everyone got it around that. I think like what was it the Omicron or some shit? I don't know. I just remember feeling like really shitty that day. And then I was like, ooh, should I go out? And I was like, no, nah, I'm in my head because I have anxiety. So I was yeah. like, 
I always, like, through the whole pandemic, I've, every single moment I had some weird thing, I would be like, it's COVID. Mm. So I thought it was just one of those scenarios again. Were, were and then you, I drank, like, hot toddies all night. And then oh, we yeah. all woke up just feeling like, oh, fuck. So you are hungover and you had COVID. Yeah. That's that's how you spend New Year's Day right there. Yeah. Were you... Did you experience the same thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, I couldn't even move. I was glued to my couch. Oof. And I was like, yeah, I was just not, I was a hot mess. Were you, so in COVID, were you getting like anything done? Were you just afraid to leave your apartment? Um, were you that level of anxious? No, COVID, I thrived. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt too. I fucking loved it. I mean, like, I, I hate saying that because I understand how serious it was and yeah, like yeah, yeah. it affected well, a lot well, of people. Well, we were young but. and healthy, so we weren't, we couldn't really be affected to the I greatest just, extent. It was such a great year. Like, yeah. I honestly had the best year Same because dude. one, you're stripped from all the pressure of being a creative, uh -huh. especially in a, like a city like this, yeah. because you don't feel like you have to constantly work at mm. anything. Right. Because all you of a sudden everyone's equal. Like the, 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 the guy that just released like a really awesome project and video and like is at the top of his directing game or whatever is instantly the same as like yeah. someone starting out or like you know it's like yeah you couldn't get much done money and status completely went out the window everyone was on the same page uh -huh. no one was working there's nothing really you could do yeah dude we need another pandemic it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> and we so we like f left the city and went to wyoming so right, it was yeah. all just like hiking outside and biking and is, is taylor's family up there is that why you guys are up there all the time? um his family ha has a house there yeah. but they they weren't there for most of it mm. so we kind of just had this empty house where we could just yeah not work and dude i want to go up there so bad it it's looks amazing. idyllic do you do you see um I'm, i've been obsessed with like all of the um, the Taylor Sheridan shows. Yeah, me too. Like, have you you've been watching 1923? Um, no, I'm waiting for it to all come out because oh, then I'm just gonna just binge watch binge all of them. it. Although I, I did audition for one of the parts. Did you? Yeah. For for 1923 or another? yeah, it was a very small part, and they were like, you have to. I I don't know if. Were you going for like one of the Native American roles? One of the prostitutes, of course. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I feel of like course. I'm typecast, but You're typecast. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, hell yeah, I'll audition for this, but they're like, you have to be fully mm. naked and Yeah. You weren't for them. No, I was. I auditioned. I just someone Someone got snagged it. it. Yeah. Damn. It's like whatever. Yeah, that's uh do you feel like with um being a, an actress say, getting no's no's often not to say you get them often, no it's often but it's often I yeah. imagine yeah. do you feel like that just bludgeons your self esteem to some degree or you just walk right through it you just accepted that fact of literally don't care yeah because if you do care you can't like, make it just yeah. don't do it yeah that's how I kind of feel about kind of everything in the creative world everything it's so i mean especially in a city like this like you you can't get every opportunity no and and honestly you have to do it because you love doing it yeah. whether you're getting paid or not uh -huh. so just do it and then eventually you'll start getting paid for it mm -hmm. but yeah if you're like grasping to it for a paycheck yeah. you're gonna fucking fail yeah i think um it's funny like Doing, I've been doing like the photography shit for like artists and stuff. And there's, um, I was just talking about this yesterday actually, but with the creative shit, mm -hmm. some people, some people just value it so wildly different. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've noticed this with shooting for a lot of musicians where there's like a whole, whole swath of musicians who value photography as nothing like they don't need to pay for it mm -hmm. as if it's always going to be a collaborative mm -hmm. you know endeavor mm -hmm. and so like yeah you give them uh, a little brief 
of yeah. of what the shoot may be like in your rate. And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, we thought this was uh, a collaborative like, wait, thing. Wait, you get paid for this? Yeah, I'm like, you, first of all, you're getting the photos. I'm spending all the time editing. Mm-hmm. I'm spending costs on a film. You're, yeah. you're winning every part of this deal, you know? Well, and it's, you know, it's all of your training, all yeah. of your experience, uh-huh. all of your I'm going to be posing expertise. you. I'm going to be finding the yeah. shots for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the, colla- the lopsidedness of this collaboration is extravagant. What I've learned with that is because I've experienced the same thing. Yeah, with video. With video. But it's just, it's, um, they're often like, not financially stable and starting right. out too. Yeah. And it's all about like educating them because mm-hmm. sometimes people just don't know. And it like, yeah. if they don't know, they don't know. They don't mean to like insult you, but it's right. kind of just like, yeah, once you break it down for them, then they're like, oh, yeah, I understand now. Right. I mean, there are jobs that I do where it ends up being like I'm making like less than minimum wage mm-hmm. you know a hundred percent and that's because it's like you give them what you think you should be paid and then you want that money that, yeah. that they have and they and they bargain you down mm-hmm. and you're like fuck you know like I already made put in all this effort you know yeah and so I yeah I think that's the tough thing about when you're first starting out as any creative like being able to price yourself appropriately but also not sacrifice your integrity too. Yeah, like for the first several years, I feel like you just have to you have to kind of do, do that. shit for yeah, free, right? Like, and then like even pay out of pocket to like prove right. that you can create what you say you can create, mm-hmm. and then you start doing shit for free, and then yeah. you start start doing like what you can with. The budgets that you're presented with, mm-hmm. which means that you probably aren't making money, but at least you have someone else paying yeah. for the thing. Right. Yeah. And just and being then you start making money. Totally. Maybe. And then <laughs> you start being able to be like declining jobs. Yeah. Which feels great to I, say no. <laughs> I love that I love that you do that. And then you send me your jobs that you decline. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love that. Um, yeah, the funny thing with, because uh, I come from a musician background, and uh, there's so many costs of being a musician. It's almost not worth it. I mean, look at all this shit. This is expensive. It's expensive and it takes years to get to this point. Yeah. And um, to think about, yeah, if you, let's say you're just releasing one song, and mm-hmm. you don't have any background with um, producing or mm-hmm. recording, let alone have the equipment to do so, you're going to go to a studio and spend at least $1,000 yeah. just on at the least, studio time. Yeah. Then you need to hire an engineer, mm-hmm. you know, multiple engineers. Then, yeah, you need to promote it with a photo shoot, maybe a music video. And it's so hard, too, because it's it's only what people can hear right yeah. unless then you start spending money on visual aspects and uh-huh. then you can reach a broader audience but totally yeah it's tough unless you are a kid and you have all the fucking time in the world to you you need a job to fund that shit mm-hmm. and it's like how do you pay for your rent on top of that well, that's like the that's hustle people, in la for yeah, every creative it's right. like what do you do right how do you how do you divvy up your time to make money and not want to shoot yourself? Because there's so many people in LA who come here for a few years and just move back. Yeah, they're move like, back home. Peace they, out. they can't hack it, you know? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. What I do you think the trick is? What is your trick? The trick? Um, I mean, I've been just throwing so much shit at the wall. Yeah. You know, just seeing. See like, what sticks. Yeah. And, and luckily, like, I've. I've been just good enough at a lot of different things that, like, I get jobs in a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. But I, I am not at a point where I'm a, a, a career, a solid mm-hmm. one career thing, mm-hmm. which I kind of like. And I've kind of been like that forever with um, 
just getting bored easily. Oh, I feel that. I yeah. get I get so just bored of doing the same One thing. One thing. Yeah, and um, and I and that's why I kind of like music because it mm-hmm. lets you it lets you do photos and video. Mm-hmm. Um, it lets you. You can do it all. Yeah, you can kind of just have have fun more than if you were strictly a studio like mastering engineer. Yeah, and you're just kind of doing I mean it's a new song every project or whatever but you're kind of doing the same thing although it's good yeah. fucking money if, yeah. you, if you can do that well see that's that's always the dilemma yeah. is when you can master, master something yeah. you can really start profiting mm-hmm. whereas like like I was I, I in the same way I get so bored so I like love editing but do I want to be an editor no yeah I love directing um, and I and I do want to be a director forever, mm-hmm. but I also love acting. I like being in yeah. the front. And one of the reasons why I like acting is because you get to be different people. Yeah. Like I like get tired of just being myself. Yeah, I think that's a cool thing too about uh, about being a creative, like a multifaceted creative, because all that shit does influence itself. Like you mm-hmm. acting. You're being on set. You're seeing how people are approaching the mm-hmm. shot that you're in, and that's clearly influencing how you direct. Yeah, and you just get to experience life from like just tons of different perspectives. Yeah, and it's fun. You yeah. know, like the the creative. If everyone could do it, everyone would do it. It's just there's there's the hurdles of obviously sucking for a long time at everything. To be good enough that people will even want to pay you yeah. or hire you. And um, yeah, I think that's one of the tricks. That is the trick. It's just lo- to not be afraid to suck. Yeah. Cause you're going to suck. I, I feel like a lot of people, um, once they reach like adulthood and they didn't spend any time, because when you're a kid, you kind of suck at everything mm-hmm. and you just kind of accept that you do. Yeah. And then when you're an adult, you kind of are afraid. You're afraid to suck. Yeah. You don't want to suck. <laughs> yeah. So you give up quickly. Yeah. Well, and that's like a lot of people when they start projects, whatever creative um, medium they're in, it's like you start a project and a lot of things aren't don't even see the day, the light of day because yeah. you're so afraid to put it out there. But that's one thing I learned is like if you're stuck on a project and you're trying to be perfect about it, mm-hmm. just release it. Just yeah, dude. Just move on to the next one. Totally. Yeah, dude. I mean, it, like, I I do the same thing where, like, I like writing a lot of music. And do I think every song that I write is is great? No, not necessarily. Like, but I, do I think it's worthy of finishing and just putting finishing out is there? Finishing such a, like, know? talent. Like, some people just can't finish anything. Yeah, and that's, and that's what keeps you just fucking grinding the wheels. Yeah, and, like, the more you release, the more you show people that you're, like, and you in it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think... Um, I mean, that's what, like, in a lot of ways, going to school, like, as an artist yeah. is, is you're just showing people that, like, yes, you went to study it, but, like, ultimately art is so subjective. Right. So, like, really, what is it? Like, you could go to years and years of school and mm-hmm. whatever, but it's more just showing someone that you can start something and finish it. Right. I went to kind of a creative college for... Did you get a degree? Yeah, I have a, I have a degree in music theory. Oh, hey. And a degree in audio engineering. But I don't think it really yeah does it help do you feel like it's helped you i mean i learned a lot because it was like they gave me access to tools and instruments Mm -hmm. that i wouldn't have had otherwise Mm -hmm. and other people who were like-minded to bounce ideas off of and grow together with but i don't think it was like in the grand scheme of things necessary are you still in debt from it no that's great no luckily um i my music theory degree was all scholarships, and uh, the audio engineering degree, I have my I have my dad paid for enough enough of that where it wasn't that expensive, but yeah, like if you if you didn't spend any of that money and invested mm-hmm. all of it in gear and just yeah. fucking played with it for however many years you would right? have been in college, you probably would have came out even further ahead. That's the dilemma I have felt with like film school. 
and why I never went to film school. Um, I just went to a bunch of community colleges and I didn't want to ever like be told I needed to take a certain class because I was not, I hated school. I hated school. Yeah. So when I got to college, I was like, I love learning the things that I want to learn. So I went and I took the classes that I wanted to take and didn't want to take the shit yeah. I didn't want to take. Yeah. But well, yeah, it was the same. It was like you either spend all that money to make projects and learn firsthand or... Yeah. Well, it's like I went to school with a base, a baseline knowledge of mm -hmm. everything that I was doing. And there were other people who were going there with zero knowledge. And it was like such a, a such a gap of like of really having to study and like to pass your classes to like me where I'd, I would go home and just write and just kind of flex mm -hmm. the creativity rather than having to really like bust my ass to get through with the degree or anything. So yeah, I, I mean like the synthesizer shit, um, like I got a few cents here, like buying those early on taught me a lot about just audio in itself because yeah. there's so many there's so many different like little knobs and settings that are are relative to everything in audio well, i feel like it's infinite yeah i like, mean you can make any sound you want really yeah. but yeah the the dude if i was listening to this right now just like don't if you're more trying to be creative don't go to school <laughs> School sucks. Go to LA. <laughs> yeah. Fuck school. And live. Go to LA and be broke as shit <laughs> yeah. and miserable for yeah, like dude. at least five years. And uh, then <laughs> at least five, maybe ten. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the secret though. Like just fuck. But artists are addicted to misery. Yeah. Because so it makes like, their art better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like if you want your art, <laughs> go fucking suck in LA. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well, I think about that too. Like in Chicago... One of the reasons I left Chicago was I didn't feel, this might sound pretentious, but I didn't feel like I was totally surrounded by enough people that were doing, like all of my favorite work mm -hmm. from, from movies to music was coming out of LA. Well, that's a huge, huge thing is one thing that is beneficial to school is that you're surrounded by people that are in it the same yeah, way as you. And sure. like... You want to be inspired and um, you want yeah. competition. You want that challenge like, yeah. oh, damn, this guy's this guy's doing exactly what I want to be doing. And that was like at one point I felt like, and this was communi community college only, but like yeah. one point I my, my stopping point was like I stopped going to schools because I did not feel challenged enough. Yeah. And that could have been the school that I was going to or whatever. But um, I want to like watch people like other students work or other people's work and be like, fuck, that's way better than mine. Like yeah, I dude. need, like, I love that because then For you sure. learn. And if you're always like the best and you, you go out into the real world and you realize yeah. how shitty you actually totally. are. Totally. I think that was, um, I quickly learned that. Um, I mean, I learned that in Chicago, like there were people around me who thought there was kind of, I mean, there were there were people in my band who thought we were hot shit. And, we were, and I knew <laughs> deep down, like, we are not that good. And this isn't going to go that far. You always have to have challenge. Yeah. And I, I yeah, just being unsatisfied mm -hmm. is what kind of pushes you to that next level. Yeah. Or maybe not, like, unsatisfied for me because I always want to practice... Um, like achieving some sense of wholeness, mm, yeah, like whatever sure. I'm doing. Like You want to be happy. Yeah, well, and like wherever you are, you want to feel, like enjoy it because yeah. you're never going to be there again. Mm -hmm. So like even if you're in a shitty apartment with your mattress on the floor like <laughs> I was for a long yeah. time, like <laughs> just fucking enjoy it because then you're going to look back on those days and be like, oh my God, that was so fun. Like yeah, it dude. sucked, but like I had the best time. Yeah, and that's how I feel like right now, like, no one's barking down my tree to ask me to do anything in some direction. Like, it's just like me doing exactly what I want to be doing. Yeah, like, look, you have a fucking two-bedroom apartment <laughs> and you're yeah. doing a podcast, you're making music, photography, I, I, sh like selling shirts and like designing yeah. your own brand. Like, it's great. Yeah, thank you. I think it's just like, yeah, what... 
what satisfies you in the moment instead of you have to live a little bit in the moment to to feel like you're you're making life worthwhile mm -hmm. for sure you can't always be thinking like oh man if i could only just do that one extra thing then you're I'll, gonna drive yourself crazy you'll go insane literally drive yourself crazy and then you're gonna get burnt out yeah and, and that's and that's when you anymore. move back home yeah then it's not fun anymore and yeah. then if it's not fun and you're not making money right what's the fucking point i mean like how many people are making you know 100k a year and fucking are miserable yeah doing going into the same office typing the same reports or doing the same well then what's what it like it's like what does, is life yeah does the money does the money really make it all worthwhile i don't know it depends on the person but yeah some people thrive with routine yeah. i would I've, I've, I yeah. came to the conclusion that I can never hold a normal job. Did you a ever, normal meaning like scheduled yeah. nine to five. Did but. you ever work like a cubicle gig or anything? No. Yeah. No, but I have worked in customer service. Mm, yeah, me too. And I don't think I could ever do that again. <laughs> I worked one summer at a, I was an intern at a property company and I was at a desk for, Eight hours a day. How was that? I wanted to shoot myself within a month. Yeah. And I was eating like the same like three restaurants around for lunch, like pop yeah. and shit. And um, yeah, dude, like looking at Excel every day, I'm like, how do people stare at this bullshit? Like there was one uh, towards the end of my, <laughs> my, uh, my time there. It was like the, I was working with like one of the accountants to like, go through like these spreadsheets of like million dollar purchases at Shem. Like, I'm not qualified for this. I don't know what these numbers are. I don't even know what escrow means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how did you get the, oh, it was an internship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, how did you get that job? I was, get, I was getting $11 an hour. And, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I remember like when below $10 an hour was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eleven dollars an hour is awesome back then. Yeah, in Chicago too. Yeah, but um, I mean, I guess that was like eight years ago. No, 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 fuck, that was like ten years ago. But, but yeah, I remember like, I remember I was like knee deep in a project that I had to finish for the company or something, and I'm like, yeah, I quit. I, like, <laughs> I, I, I gotta go back to school next week. It was like last minute. Like I gotta go. <laughs> What's the worst job? Or like, do you have any? fired lot. experiences or fired or like i've had a lot of jobs like what was the most standout end of job experience whether that's fired or quit well i i um my very first job um i worked at halloween city nice. and uh so yeah i mean that was that's like a classic high school seasonal job yeah and it was like so yeah like all of October, you're getting the store ready and sh setting up. And I remember like Halloween came and I kept getting calls from the manager. I wasn't working that day. And she's like, you need to come in here. We're fucking swamped. And I just, I just, I'm like, yeah, you're <laughs> like, like put the batteries out no. of my flip phone. Well, you're not working. You're not yeah, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not working. I never came back. I got my paycheck like right before like Halloween. Oh, and it was like just like I'm done, you know. Yeah, so you I'm, never showed up. I again. never showed up again. You know? Nice. It was just like, it was stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like half half the job. I was in the back trying gluing together decorations that were broken by some toddler, you know, and just putting back um, gross costumes that people were wearing already. You know, like <laughs> returned them like the same day. That's why they have the rule now: no returns. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, I, w I was talking about this yesterday, actually. I worked at a landscaping company. Right. Um, that was brutal. Dude, th those dudes, th those guys deserve everything. They deserve to be paid a lot more than they do. Well, that's like what the shift is right now. It's like blue-collared workers are starting mm -hmm. to make... I mean, there's not a lot of people who actually want to work, so... Right. The Dude, hourly for that, it's like, if you want to make money... Dude, I went I went on this one job with um, who's uh, who's with the landscaping crew, and we went up to Wisconsin to like install like a hundred flower beds, and it was it came to be lunchtime, 
And I'm sitting there with my like shitty like PB and J and like a Capri Sun or something. Aww. And and every single awesome. yeah, I was like 16. <laughs> I miss Capri Suns. But every single dude, they were like they were all Hispanic dudes, and every single one of them just pull out their phones and were watching porn like full volume. Interesting. Just like no one's talking to each other. They're all just watching their own video. That's so strange. I don't know. I don't know if that was specific to that crew that I was on. I hope so. <laughs> or it was just a widespread uh What or, is that? I don't know if that was indicative of that entire job of like they're all doing all that. All landscapers are into they, porn. Yeah. It was very <laughs> bizarre. And they're all like An Spanish. Way. They're all like Spanish porn. Like weird. Yeah. And I'm like right next to these guys and they're just watching it eating Strange. eating their sandwiches. You're just like the little white boys. Yeah. <laughs> it was What's so this guy doing here. I know, dude. Yeah. But that was um I got that job I didn't get hired after I had to go up to another job in Wisconsin and water like a ton of plants. And I'm pretty sure like Pretty sure I just did not water. You had to like drown these plants mm-hmm. in water. I didn't water them enough. And then they said like a week later they were all dead. And I think that was my fault. Probably. <laughs> and then I had to go back to school. So I dipped out of that project. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I know. When you're a kid, you just don't care that much. Yeah, you don't really get the value of yeah. money or keeping relationships. Right, because you're not... Um, I wasn't like... Dying for cash, you know, it was mm-hmm. like just to keep you busy in the summer. Yeah. Make some some spending money, you know. Yeah. But yeah, did you have any first gigs that were like just same man, just terrible? like through the ringer. I never looking back, I'm like, I was so like, oh, I would never accept me as a child. Like Yeah. Like I I didn't work. I didn't I didn't I mean, all through high school I didn't work. Uh-huh. I'm like, why the fuck why parents, why didn't you make me work? I didn't work. I didn't have like a car. Just pretty cares, much like dude. I respect that. Did I mean, whatever I wanted, and then when I had opportunity to work, because this that's the thing in um, the Big Island. There's not a lot of job there's opportunities. Not a ton of work, yeah. No, it's like you a know, even all the, the adults or, yeah. are trying to find work. Right, like yeah. so, there wasn't much for me to do. But um, yeah, when I got out of high school and lived on my own, then reality hit hard mm. so I was like taking whatever jobs I could yeah and they're I mean was they like tourism focused no I no. that would have been smart yeah <laughs> what were you doing um breaking oh, the beach god I was like a lot of like weird uh, promo modeling gigs mm. or like um I would even clean houses for a little bit mm. but I did that maybe three times and then yeah, like yeah that the, could be kind of gross oh it was just boring and awful and I hate cleaning yeah I like ask Taylor I'm just really really kind <laughs> yeah. of a mess you're not the time. you're not a housewife material no no, no. <laughs> I love to cook on my own accord when I want yeah. to make me clean Mm-mm. no dude I, I is so I assume Taylor is more the cleanlier one then. oh he is yeah. type A. That's perfect. He is a type A. <laughs> I am so proud of him though because yeah. he's come a long it way. He keeps you in check. Well, no, like like we keep each other in check because mm. you know, I've really tried to take the initiative to um be more mindful. But then he's also taken the like we no longer have to have all the cups facing the same oh, way. Okay. Let me just put it that oh, way. Oh, <laughs> so he's like pushing OCD level. Of yes. Titles. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, because I don't really have any of that OCD. Some people are like, mm-hmm. um, if there's a, you know, a spot on the fucking ground, like a, a yeah. piece of, like Rosie, dude, her hair is like everywhere. And I oh, yeah. I just can't do anything about that. We have a black black fluffy cat yeah it's, it's the same thing and um i just never really i mean i'm pretty cleanly i keep things tidy but i'm not like like some people yeah like having all the the mugs upside down or uh i just like don't grouped in with their yeah i don't give own a fuck. accord and it's yeah kind of, my yeah my dish cabinets are kind of a mess oh don't even look at my <laughs> clothes drawers yeah dude i don't i just don't do you care. fold all your clothes <laughs> 
I try to. I, I do. I do. Like all like not socks, underwear, no. Okay. Just thrown in there. Why yeah. is, is yours just like a, a new quin off? Well, no, I I <laughs> fold my clothes, but then it's just a matter if they stay folded. Mm. And yeah. I definitely I mean like women's undergarments you can't really fold. Yeah. But right. it is kind of funny seeing um that like guys sometimes fold their boxers. Yeah, I don't really give a fuck about that. Because no one's going to see the wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, um, you don't have any siblings? I have a younger brother. A younger brother. Is yeah. he still in Hawaii? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's he doing for work then? Um, he is a, I don't know the proper term for it, but he's like a caretaker. <laughs> okay. So his clients are usually. Like a travel nurse type thing. Well, he has like, he works with disturbed youth. Oh. So he used to work, like, have you ever watched the movie Short Term 12? No. Um, Short Term 12. It's actually a really, really good movie. But. So after years of living with you, he's like, I got to, I've been living with disturbed youth my yeah. entire life. <laughs> no, he is a disturbed youth. Oh, okay. So he, no, he's like, so he, he would um, go to a faci- facility with yeah. like, not necessarily foster kids, but kind of a mm. foster kid, like yeah. home. And he would hang out with them, watch them, cook for them. And they were often, um, you know, kids with disabilities or traumas or whatever. So now he kind of does the same thing in Hawaii, but he works one-on-one with Mm. clients that he, like, goes about with them on their day. Dude, to be, uh, it's kind of on the downswing, like, but in, like, the 60s when, like, mental asylums Mm -hmm. were, like, at their peak. Which is not that long ago. Yeah, and and now it's like an issue because there's not a place for those people mm-hmm. necessarily. But um, yeah, running or being one of those caretakers, like yeah, like uh, putting people in jackets, yeah, and like yeah, giving them meds. That sounds like absolute insanity. Like if yeah. you if you were um, if you were on like the, the dangerous ward. You know, the people who are like, like some of the skid row people should probably be in those wards, you know? Yeah, it's really sad. Well, your, your place is I, like I was going to say, skid I row. live on skid row, <laughs> yeah. so I know exactly who you're talking about. Well, dude, yeah, I remember when you brought, when uh, when you were sh- we were shooting that music video. So Cassie shot one of my music videos, 1-800-I-LOVE-YA. And uh, we were using her apartment for some shots. And he was terrified. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, no. I <laughs> Most agree. people are when they... I have Uber Uber drivers, honestly. They're like, are you yeah. sure? Are you okay? Do you want me to wait for like until you get in the building? I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you carry like mace or like a, a little shiv? Before I used you, to. Like, I don't yeah. anymore. I probably yeah. should. But I don't honestly walk around. Yeah, yeah. I just... We have security. I feel like at daytime, nothing's really going to happen at day, in day. Occasionally, I'll walk to like a coffee shop or like yeah. a yoga class, but yeah, it's during the day. Yeah, I mean, I was looking out, I remember looking out the window and it literally looks like uh, like Dawn of the Dead, mm-hmm. like movie set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lately, so there's always like something, right? Tuesdays uh-huh. is um, a woman sings Jesus music. Like in the middle of the street? Yeah. Tuesdays. Every like the Tuesday. same woman? Yeah. Same to, songs. To too. no one in particular? Um, Whoever stops and listens. Is she good? Is she, no. She's crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like off pitch, crazy yes. mumbling. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. Um, very nasally. I mean, like, good for her. Love <laughs> that she, life for she her. Does she have a TikTok but we can follow? Maybe. But yeah, so Tuesday's that. And then um, there's a a camp across from us that owns cats on leashes, which Whoa. literally kills me because I have to hear them and, like, I want to go save them. Wait, so there's a guy who's holding, like, 30 cats on leashes? There's, like, it's, like, a group of um, older black gentlemen, uh-huh. and they're really nice. They're great. I mean, they're great people. They're, yeah. I mean, they... They honestly are good people, and they just sit out in their lawn chairs with their cats, and it's like honestly the best thing ever. But 
I often just like want to go make sure that like, yo, do your cats like have enough food? Yeah. Like you, your cat should not be on leashes with collars. They should have harnesses. Like That's funny. You know? I would love to take a photo of that, that situation. It's very, very sad. And then I like lately I've been having like this meow come and I'm like. A meow like in your head? <laughs> what do you mean? It's questionable. No, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because the guy. Oh, like from- yeah. So I like every afternoon I hear meowing, and I'm like, do I need to go save these cats? So I have to put on music, otherwise it like uh, drives me insane. Like I yeah, honestly dude. feel like a yeah. The to think of the little economy on Skid Row that like obviously there's drugs, yeah. obviously there's prostitution, but there's got to be some other like little products and Apples. skill sets that will yeah. be thrown around. I feel like bikes are like stolen things. Oh, uh, dude! The Cell first day, phones, I, first day I moved like, here, my bike got stolen, which is just quintessential sucks. Los Angeles. But yeah, if you were if you were on Skid Row, I feel like um, what could I? What would I be selling on Skid Row? It'd be funny, like a, like you know how those I love New York shirts, just mm-hmm. I love Skid Row, <laughs> just. Like, just uh, just the Skid Row memor- merch line. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the, oh the my God. Skid Row hats. <laughs> Fucking. Although I guess there is the band Skid Row, so I'd probably get sued. Oh. I don't know. Just spell it differently or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, um, is your, is your dad ever came to LA with you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He goes, Mahaya, where do you live? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dad, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm sure he has. <laughs> and then I took him to um, uh, MedMen. Matt, oh, Madden, MedMen. MedMen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, whoa. Was like, so so your dad his... is a stoner, huh? Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yes. And he smoked, like, a whole uh, vape pen in, in one, a weekend. In one sitting, yeah. Yeah, and I was that's, like, Dad. Just melting so his brain. I'm like let's let like, go back to the normal stuff. Like no more yeah, dude. The vape, vape pens. The vape pens are so it they're too easy. Mm-hmm. Like there needs to be some. I like the process of marijuana. Like being able to easily access that high is is too much. Yeah. Like and then becomes a habit, like yeah. a oral fixation rather right. than totally like a, a need. Moment. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it, yeah. Does I guess if you have. Um, anxiety or uh, or something that you just need to be heavily medicated. I get it. Mm-hmm. Or you're you work a job that is so fucking yeah. You're a stoner, aren't you? I'm a, yeah. Not <laughs> I. I dabble. You know. I I'm not. Um. I don't do it like uh, religiously, but I need to do but it. That's your like. What would be your vice? Yeah, marijuana for yeah. sure. Dude, I've gotten really into coffee lately. You never drink coffee. Yeah, I know. And I've gotten really into it just because I got this coffee maker. Wait, you never, like, I remember you coming over and you said you don't drink coffee. Yeah, I don't. But now I do. (laughs) I feel like that's happening to all my friends. I used to be the only person that drank coffee. Yeah. And now my friends that, like, swore swore they never would drink coffee. Right. They now. I think it's partly um, I'm addicted to like dude. The, they make so many different flavors of creamers, and I'm kind of exploring the creamer <laughs> so, world right yeah. now. So it's like <laughs> you're I'm, having coffee with your creamer. I'm having yes, <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it is. It's like finding like a new. Um, so you're it's like, like a new. It's like a new girlfriend. You know, and you're like you're just learning each other. Learning, you're just like a lusting after each other. You know. But you're like, like your coffee's sweet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely like. Um, what kind of cream? Not are? good for you. See, I don't even like whatever the cheapest. Like, I go for the names. Like, are you like a delight guy? Yeah, or? I do like delight. Um, I I kind of go for like, they make like a like a churro cinnamon. Oh. Yeah, like just disgusting flavors that is like, dude, like kind of like you know how vapes had um yeah had like just. The most random fucking flavor ideas just to entice every aspect of the market. Yeah. I'm kind of that guy who's just filtering, just changing the channel just to try them all, you know? So, like, if I open your fridge, you're going to have, like, an assortment of creamers. It's disgusting. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then like Folgers coffee. Yeah, no. Well, at least I do whole bean, you know. Oh, and hey, I, I ground, you're a fancy bitch. And I ground it down. Um, fancy bitch. Uh, yeah, the creamer thing. I so the first time I had coffee, uh, I was working at a studio in Chicago, and and yeah, there was the hazelnut creamer. And I don't remember what the fucking coffee was, but it was like a flavor that I've never reached since. And it was like, dude, it was like, and, and maybe it was like, like a drug I know, I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. And it's like, I don't know if the pot, the, the coffee machine was just well worn too. It was like, mm -hmm. could just make the perfect cup of coffee. You're still dreaming about it. I know. And I've never, I've never achieved that high ever since. <laughs> but I'm, I'm dabbling again. I need to, I need to cut back. Let's just say that. Well, how many cups of coffee a day do you drink? I don't know, dude. Well, see, when I was a kid, um, my dad would, would get, uh, like, you know those six packs of soda from like uh, like this short cans, you know, mm -hmm. dude. I would down like a six pack in. Like, I feel like, yeah, we're from like the same generation where our parents like there would always be Coke in the house yeah. or some kind of soda uh -huh. or like candy, bagel yeah. bites. Just no one gave a fuck. Tots. Yeah, and so I was drinking so much soda as a kid, and I'm pretty sure every like caffeine receptor and like neuron neuron in my brain is just burnt mm -hmm. burnt out caffeine doesn't do a fucking thing to me i'll have a cup of coffee right before bed oh me too like it, it's just like yeah um until it does have effect in you because i feel like i'm the same way but i do get to a point that i start getting the shakes to you like really noticeably right mm. now i'm okay because that's only my second cup but i'll get like shaky <laughs> and um that's hilarious my brother calls it panic juice panic juice because so he, he can't drink any caffeine otherwise he has panic attacks really yeah mm. well there's definitely like uh beans that are more packed with it right is mm -hmm. it is the dark roast Ones that have more caffeine is, mm -mm. is light roast. Light roast. Yep. So I'm like a medium roast guy. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, like a good morning blend. Yeah. It, I mean, it's the same thing when you're a kid. And, and I was like, I've probably tasted every single soda pop there ever was. And now I'm kind of. Now it's coffee time. I'm, yeah, now it's coffee time. <laughs> an adult, you know. I haven't bought soda in probably years. Yeah, me either. Yeah. I do occasionally Mix, crave mixy, a Coke. Yeah. I do love an ice cold Coke. If I was mi it, mixies, like a Coke and rum or something, mm -hmm. that is like, it has to be paired with an alcohol for me to drink a soda. Yeah. Maybe that's... Um, when I'm that's, traveling or like on set, a Coke is like sometimes all Yeah. Need. Especially abroad. When I was in India. Yeah. Dude, having a Coke in India was such a, a nice little treat. The best Coke I think I've ever had was in Morocco. It was like a mm. hundred degrees. Uh -huh. We found some like little. It was like the one like, fridge in town. Top, uh, like rooftop kind of breezy situation. Yeah. Ordered an ice cold Coke and it was <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's there's something about. Um, have you seen? Yeah, you know, I love the in movie theaters where they have the new Coke machines where it's like, where it's like every syrup. Mm -hmm. Of every soda flavor, mm -hmm. and it's such an unnecessary invention. Yeah. And you can like you can like pair like a Dr Pepper with uh, with like a Sprite. Yeah. And it's like this. Why would you give that the to Fra children? The Frankenstein soda. Yeah, it's so bad for you. Was, yeah. Was there was there something growing up that was like like a hidden delicacy that that you were obsessed with? Because I'm sure like in Hawaii. The things that you were experiencing food wise were vastly different from my Chicago upbringing. I feel like, like after school, I'd always walk to the Seven Eleven and get like a chicken teriyaki musubi. Oh, a what? <laughs> chicken teriyaki musubi. What is a musubi? You don't know what a musubi is. No, explain that, to sir. Me. I I might. It's you... like shaped like this. It's rice. It's like sushi, but like this big. 
and then usually it has a slice of spam, like that's oh, the classic yeah, spam, yeah. and then it's like wrapped with a, a piece of seaweed. So it's like a Hawaiian sushi roll type. Thing. Yes, but it's like okay. terrible for you. <laughs> hey guys, you made it this far. Some some quick, shameless self promotion. I'm giving you a free coupon to my store on freddytylerpaul.com. You can get any tea, any sweater, any book, any album of mine for 25% off. Just put in bad advice at checkout and you're golden. All right, back to the pod. At the very end of my pods, I've been doing the bad advice section. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. So I got a few little random little bitties we okay. can, we can uh, have some fun with. Exciting. All right. Last night, my grandfather asked me to come over to his house, and he sat me down and explained his will to me. Evidently, he has some fa- falling outs with his children and other family members and wishes to leave the entirety of his estate to me. It was a lot to take in all at once. I will be receiving roughly $1.5 million in assets. So next week he plans on taking me to meet his accountant and financial advisor to get a better understanding of his various financial holdings so I will have more contacts then. Additionally, any financial advice would be taken into consideration, but that's not really what I'm looking for. Any advice is, is acceptable. Wait, so he his problem is... Is dealing with his family, probably. Okay. I, I would imagine... Because the assets are, f- like, exciting, but it's just... Yeah, because it's like... Because he's basically... He had a falling out mm-hmm. with with uh, his, uh, his kids. And so I can imagine if his kids found out that this one part of the family mm-hmm. is getting all of those, those assets, dude, it's going to rip this family apart. Yeah, that, oh, that's hard. Um, good advice <laughs> is split the money. Yeah, that would be that would be a smart move, I suppose. Maybe a little bit and not let them know how much money you actually inherited. Yeah. Um, bad advice. <laughs> Spend it all immediately. Yeah, just like cash it out. Well, if you had that cash. I mean, he has properties and shit, dude. So you. Yeah, honestly, sometimes I feel like that might be more of a burden. Yeah, I think I think his grandfather's depending on what the him, asset dude. is. His grandfather's yeah. fucking him over. Like everyone's but, jealous of him, and he's all like, "Hmm, he loves me more." But then yeah. it's like ends up being you just have storage units full of shit you have right. to sort and That's like true, auction yeah. off, and it's definitely a life changing amount of money. If you could. But it's not as much as it was anymore. Like a million dollars. Sure, yeah. Like, uh, you know, watching Survivor or Alone or like all these these reality shows yeah. and they're like literally fighting for half a million dollars, a million dollars. True. And you're just like, Whoa. Would you just pump that money into like an indie film? Yeah. yeah. Well, no. I feel, well, when you're like getting money that way, you know you're going to lose like Oh, yeah, like, almost half like of it to taxes. Four hundred grand in the taxes. Or something. Yeah, so then you're only working with so much. Yeah, yeah. The most fucked thing would be he definitely has got a lawyer to figure that shit out. All yeah. the tax stuff. Yeah, yeah. If he's if he ended up spending like all of it on a home, and then the tax man comes and realizes <laughs> he doesn't have the cash to pay that back. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you definitely want to have some fun. Go on some vacation, clear your head a little bit. Yeah, but I would save a lot of that money. Yeah, I would just put that all away. Yeah. And hopefully, like, this dude's got a job that he's actually making some decent cash already. But property is great. Airbnb, that shit. Yeah, dude. Would you... Um, <laughs> or rent it out. If Would you... Would you ever move to Europe or anything? I would love to. Yeah. Was there? Have you ever been to Europe? Mm-hmm. Where have you been? Um, I have been to a lot of places. My favorites being Croatia. Ooh. Croatia is like one of my favorites. Italy, one of my favorites. Um, Dude, I've been wanting to go to... I spent a lot of time in uh, Ghent, Belgium. And like Brussels. A little bit in Amsterdam. Yeah, just smoking pot and, and adventuring around. This was right before COVID. This is actually like right when I got... The, the Mamiya, the film cam. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, dude, I was just spending the whole fucking week just shooting like street photography and just kind of falling in love with film. Amazing. 
Yeah. If someone was like, or something happened where your whole life changes and uproots and like, I don't know, you had a chance to do and be whatever the fuck you wanted to do or be. Yeah. What would you do? Um, I think honestly, I would try and throw, try and build the biggest, most expensive show I could, mm. like concert wise. Mm -hmm. And like, if you had that amount of money, making the most badass light show, like hiring lighting designers. Well, like, like even if like it, like you were still you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you still have your, like everything that you have right now. Uh -huh. But like, I guess, strip away any fear. Mm -hmm. Like completely fearless, completely not tied to anything. Yeah, no, no career goal necessarily. I mean, sure, if that was, like, something that really fueled you, but, like, let's say the world's going to end in a year. Yeah. Like, that kind of just fuck Ooh, it attitude. Yeah. Which, it, which it is probably going to end in a, a year or so, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I think I would... I would de travel is a big one. If I, w if I could... Dude, going to, like... Uh, going to, like, Antarctica and seeing, like... The march of the penguins or something would be would be a low key like just to penguins can't really fight back or anything like could you just go run through a flock of them you know and just like be hanging out with them i'm sure yeah they probably yeah. want they probably want to peck you i mean they may, might might have you they like can't yeah what exactly do do? you can They're easily pretty helpless <laughs> yeah just hanging out with some penguins that's awesome that is a great goal yeah <laughs> Because I think of this often, like, do you ever lucid dream? Mm-hmm. Usually in the morning. Yeah, that's when you yeah. are more prone to becoming aware. But, like, I have moments when I wake up in my dream and you realize it's a dream, but you have no fear because uh -huh. there's no one there to judge you but yourself. Yeah. There's literally, like, you can't die. You can't, like, you literally could do whatever the fuck you want to do. Sure. And it's kind of a great reminder to kind of apply that to life. Because in my dreams, I talk to people. I'm like, like, I become aware and there's like a person next to me. And I'm like, yeah. do you realize like this is a dream? <laughs> and then like, I'll talk to them and be like, are, do you understand? Are you dreaming? Are uh -huh. you just here for me? Like, what happens to you when I wake up? Do you do this often? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like every day? Not every day. Yeah. No. But so then I'm like, well, if I had that same attitude waking up in a dream and then like applied that to life. Yeah. It's interesting. Like I, I would love. Um, there should be a, um, like a lucid dream center where you could go and sit in. I guess they do like those those hydrotherapy. Tube yeah, there things. are like there's study centers for dreaming, but yeah, but I if, fucking love lucid dreaming. If you could like tap into kind of like the matrix or something. Yeah. Just what what's that? Not melatonin. What's that thing? There's like some drug that people take before they go to sleep that uh, often elic elicits like wacky fucking dreams. I think there's several things, but like melatonin helps you sleep because that's yeah. like the natural sleep uh -huh. chemical. But right. like, um, I've I think I think B six the vitamin helps you. Oh yeah, lucid dream. And like, there's like a bunch of tricks. I've done a lot of like studying and mm. reading about it because I'm obsessed. But there's a lot of tricks and there's um do you think back before like native americans on on the trek into the plains ever had trouble sleeping you know like did they ever like like try and make their own little drugs to fall asleep i'm sure I feel like, like they were so sophisticated in that sense like i think about often like how many uh organic drugs that were just lost through our just fucking slaughter of that race you know but like yeah i bet you like they had their own adderall you know <laughs> they like, like their own little xanax like certain flowers like homeboys really addicted to yeah dude. that plant <laughs> like like uh is is psilocybin or what what's the drug that you get some cactuses have some mm, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. sort of uh Peyote is that what mm -hmm. I'm, is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, 
Like if, there's a lot actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they yeah. there's a laundry list of them that I have no fucking clue about. But don't act so innocent. I don't honestly. It, <laughs> I've, t- I've talked. I've been talking to my guests about about it. Like how many? I want to dive deeper into that world. Like how? Like drugs? Yeah. The the psychedelic stuff. I like that. Yeah. Have you yeah. done psychedelics? Only shrooms. Okay. Have you done a few? I have done Molly. I guess you could consider cocaine, although yeah. I don't think I did it right. Yeah. And didn't feel the. <laughs> You were you were exhaling and not inhaling. I was very drunk. <laughs> okay, that's kind of um, that kind of goes hand in hand, you know. That was an interesting story. Where but, did you do Molly? Um, teen years, growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good old days. Yeah, but then I just swore, like, I don't think I could do it anymore. I don't know. It's yeah. Well, I would rather do like natural stuff, like shrooms. That's how I feel too. Weed, sure. Um, like maybe one day DMT, uh-huh. maybe ayahuasca. Right. My sister, uh, who's who uh, was on the pod last night, she uh, she's a, a big fan of <sighs> toad. Is the Sonoran Desert toad, I believe. Mm, and it's like yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. extract like the oils from its back or some shit. And then don't you like pin it into you? Like, I think so. Yeah. Cause my, I, there was this girl that I met and she had like a little tattoo, but it was like very hand done. Mm. And then that was because of the toad or whatever. You mm. take it and you like tattoo yourself. And from that. Interesting. Like, You're good. That sounds fun. Fine. Especially if you found the toad yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, would, I don't want start, any toads to be hurt during this. I don't know. And, <laughs> they might like getting late. So I don't know. <laughs> and, um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like any experience like that, I would definitely want to be with some kind of guide, yeah, or like yeah, shaman. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to get sent on a on a spiritual mission in the middle of a desert on your own. Well, and it's um, I don't know. The human brain is very fragile. For sure. Especially if you have mental illness in your family. Mm. It's like I don't want to tap into things that I'm. It's true. I'm not supposed to tap into yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I I think uh, I think if there was um, a drug that I really want to get into, not into, but try. <laughs> if I want to become a yeah, drug addict, yeah. like LSD has so much, so much stories around it. Yeah, just through like the '60s and just history. I've never done. I feel like you're like I would take you as an LSD. Pe- people think I'm a fucking just maniac, but I'm not. <laughs> and uh, I'm a total fucking nerd. Uh, I think, yeah, like, I mean, the Beatles were fucking doing it and writing their best fucking work yeah. you know, on it, you know? I can't say I've ever done LSD. I think I've done, like, a synthetic, weird version of it. Uh-huh. But S- Some it was... factory, some Amazon LSD. Yeah, but it was quite mellow. I didn't mm. experience anything. Did you experience anything with the Molly trip you did, or was it just kind of... I was kind of happy. Yeah. Just like, the, I don't know. I I just don't like ecstasy or Molly. I, yeah. I, I, I think it, it's not genuine in my opinion. Like mm. you get, you get, it's kind of like this like thrill. You're, you're sent on this roller coaster, but then you afterwards, the come down, you realize like, I don't know. It's kind of like when you get really drunk and you're like, why did I say that? Mm. It didn't really come from a genuine place. Yeah. It was more just being, being like, oh my God, we should like totally plan a road trip. And yeah, I don't think anyone's <laughs> ever really proud of the shit they say or do on yeah. the drugs. Like it doesn't, I don't feel like it comes from like a profound place or yeah. like, I think it, it, and then like when you're sober and around people on Molly, it's just like, can you stop? Yeah. Right, 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 right. Just don't. Do Could that. you imagine being in one of those fucking, uh, like a '90s rave scene yeah. where everyone's just like biting down on on their glow sticks. And See, shit. it gives me like it's like in my body to just like. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, um, I think there's a. I would love to have been to like Studio Fifty Four back in the day, because dude, first of all, everyone there was like a badass, like mm-hmm. like someone to get in, you know. And dude, I'm sure the coke was just flying through the, yeah, through everyone's nostrils. Yeah, if I had like a drug of choice, it'd probably be shrooms. Yeah, 
Shrooms. 2023 is going to be the year of shrooms for me, at least. I, like, started um, experimenting with just the tab, like, not the, like, the capsules. Yeah. So you're not actually, like... Right, right, right. It's like, just super, super microdose. It's supposed to be, like, a those. mood booster or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I think my tolerance is so low that I do feel a little yep. something. Yeah. I have a couple hidden in an ibuprofen bottle. Nice. So maybe I'll take some. Before my next pod. Yeah, you should. Maybe <laughs> Just, that's your like gimmick. Yeah. I, <laughs> Maybe your gimmick is <laughs> podcasts on shrooms. <laughs> well, that was actually, uh, I've, I've toyed with that idea of like getting really baked before the pod with the guests, but I realized yeah. not everyone wants to do that. Well, I feel like that that is what will separate because everyone and their cousin has a podcast yeah, now. I right. feel like, like you really need to come up with some kind of thing. Yeah. That like people like are interested in 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 what your guests have to say, mm-hmm. but unless you have like some famous ass person, it's like hard to get an audience. Right. But like if you have like that thing, yeah, dude. I feel like I don't know what. I don't know why this mic got so hot. All yeah, of a what happened? Huh? I don't know. Um, but I think there's. I think it's just right now. I'm still in that mode where I'm like figuring out what the fuck I'm doing, mm-hmm. you know, like figuring out audio issues, yeah, figuring out camera situations. But I think right now I'm just kind of having fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I and everyone everyone since being out here is doing cool shit. Mm-hmm. And so everyone I I'm talking to is fun to it's talk. Like to. interesting. Yeah, yeah, like I'm curious to learn more. And it's so rare nowadays to sit down unless you're like with a significant other or something to just sit down for a few hours and just talk to someone. Yeah, that's true. With no phone or Mm -hmm. a real distraction. Yeah. And so it's been nice to... Yeah, that is cool. Um, Like like Hot Wings is kind of funny. Like what if you like did a spin of... Yeah, well, I'm also not trying to interview people either. Like I'm not trying to be like the best interviewer because it's like but that is the best interview is when you're more conversational versus, yeah and that's what i'm kind of doing yeah i'm just trying to hang out and pick each other's brain a little bit yeah and i'm kind of enjoying the advice things because i feel like getting people's advice is always fun advice is fun and it really gets gets you a glimpse of their personality more yeah, than that's true okay so next advice yeah, thing yeah, i let's feel try, like let's the, try the first one was kind of I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tough. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> we got some great ones. Um, but it's got to be bad advice. Like, you don't want actual advice. I'm No, nah, I'm kind of just doing whatever advice you want. Okay, you, you know, okay. Because like, I could, giving, like, come up with some bad advice. Yeah, no, I know. But, okay. I mean, I'm here for that, too. <laughs> yeah. So I've been with my gr- current girlfriend for six years. One night, I was going with her to a family party, but she ended up being called into work. As I'm still close with her family, I decided I'd still go, knowing she would meet me there later. A few hours passed, and my girlfriend rang and said she was going to have to stay in all night. I ended up getting super drunk with her sister, who's around my age, and we ended up having unprotected sex. Oh my fucking god. In the morning, we both agreed it was stupid, and we would keep our mouths shut so we didn't break up the family. Anyway, now she's pregnant and told everyone else it was a one-night stand, but it is confirmed mine. My girlfriend is so excited for her sister to have the baby, and it's driving me insane. Family is also quite wealthy, so I don't think she will have any issues supporting the child. What do I do? Oh, my God. <laughs> Tell the fucking truth. Yeah, dude. dude. I don't know. I don't know. You have to. You have to. Yeah. I mean, like, not even in the sense that it's the right thing to do, right. but it's more, like, both the right thing to do yeah, and— and you cheated on your girlfriend. Well, and it's just like if you're looking at it um trying to come out selfishly, like yeah. if you are like wanting to see the 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 situation from a selfish viewpoint and wanting uh-huh. to take care of yourself, like you still have to tell the truth because that shit harbors deep and it will come out in weird and you're gonna fucking see ways. The, you're going to see your kid running around. You are going to have so much guilt in your life. Yeah. You are going to have so much anxiety and that's going to manifest manifest in other yeah, ways dude. and scenarios. Like, unless you're just a complete psychopath <laughs> that does not feel anything, yeah. like you are just going to you're right. be miserable your whole life. That is... And sorry... We live in an age where that shit's going to come out. 
You're going right, to take right, right, right. a 23 and me. You know, totally, your girlfriend's yeah. going to buy you a little like 23 and me test for uh-huh. your birthday thinking it's, it's going to so look cute. just like you. The kid's going to grow up looking just like you're like, whoa. It's, well, it's not going to be hard to figure out. Yeah, and what happens? I mean, like, I have friends that, you know, have you know in their late 30s and they find out their dad isn't their real dad because mm. they've taken one of those tests. Whoa. Yeah, that would change your perspective on a lot of different things. Yeah. I don't know. First of all, this and guy's a piece of shit. First of all, this guy's <laughs> a piece of shit. Second of all, your sister's a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, and... She's keep. I mean, I like, might yeah. be canceled for this, but she's keeping the baby. Yeah, I know. And and the fact that sh- his girlfriend is excited for her. What do the parents feel about like a one night stand? Like, I don't know. It's such. I understand. Like the woman, some women just don't want to go through mm-hmm. terminating a pregnancy. Just. But some- if you find out early enough. I mean, does does this woman? not see the complications from this situation herself. You know? Yeah, she's a piece of shit, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they both fucking suck. Yeah, dude. Re- regardless, this is going to destroy multiple well, how relationships. How long have they been together? Said six years. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So. Six years, man. And And he said it's a happy relationship. No, it's not. Yeah, I mean... No, it's not. You don't just cheat on your yeah, girlfriend in six years when it's a happy relationship. Yeah, when you're... I'm sure he was blackout drunk. Yeah, but even if you're blackout drunk, like... Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like... Your when, brain... Like, yeah, it's like even if you're not thinking you and you're it drunk... You would have done it regardless, yeah. It doesn't really constitute... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. if you are true to yourself and and you're wasted... You're still not going to go, I don't know. Do, do that. Like, no, I agree. Do something that you would not do, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, um, like maybe your morals are out the window, but your genuine self is still there. Yeah. So assuming this this kid gets born, um, does his girl, I don't know. Either, either he uh, has to dip, dip, <laughs> you know? Dip the fuck out and just restart his life on on another country. Nah, if okay, so this goes for <laughs> two people here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if we're just talking about his perspective, he needs to. He needs to own up to what. Needs, I mean, yeah. at that point, you're such a shitty person. Yeah. Like, just own it. Yeah. Like, just let it all fall apart uh-huh. around you and accept it. Laugh at it. Like, if you like, whatever. Yeah. Like, if you really, if that that's what you're gonna do. Uh-huh. Just accepts that. Yeah, he's fucked. Or learn from it and be like, yeah, it fucking sucks. I'm shitty, but like. <laughs> yeah. At I least don't, I can start This isn't going to end well. Let's just say that. There's no way. There's no way. There's no, like, what, you want to cover it up? Yeah. Like, there's no way to cover it up. Fuck, man. Also, I'd be pissed if, like. Your boyfriend did that. Well, yeah. Or if, like, you're that guy and the sister was Wanted like, I'm going to have the baby. Yeah. Like, like if she just terminated it, and and it's such a such a a rough thing to talk about for some people, but it's twenty twenty three. Grow the fuck up. Yeah, I'm just if it's if just, if just, you know at a certain point before yeah. it's even like a thing, I yeah. think it's yeah. The world is so overpopulated. <laughs> yeah, dude, we just had eight billy. Like, you why know? the f- like? I'm sorry, we yeah. can mass murder <laughs> cows who are yeah, mammals right. who are like yeah can feel and. Have, have you seen and, how they make chicken nuggets? Yes, I uh, yes. Yeah. So it's like, why can we do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like terminating humans are so sacred. A fucking little thing that's not even a yeah. thing. Right. Agreed. I think we just nipped that one in the butt. Yeah. Let's try another one. You suck. One. Yeah. <laughs> Your <laughs> life is going to be shit now. Everyone here is in for some bullshit. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, man. And then, like, the sisters can never. Yeah, that's going to be sad. Yeah. So I'm 31, and I've never been in love, although I've dated. 
I'm starting to think there's something wrong with me as I feel most people have by this age. I'm just curious as to whether others are similar and whether this could be due to just not meeting the right person. So this guy... I feel like that happens a lot, though. I don't think... 31 is young. I mean, some people just fall for people easier than others. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't think there's anything wrong with not feeling totally in love. I mean, there's no way this guy's dated there's I mean, so many there's aspects so, there's so many people that will be perfect for you yeah. that you just haven't met yet well and it's like a question of where do you live it's a question of yeah what kind of family you come from and are you straight right yeah do you have you explored like yeah i think this guy just needs to have more sex yeah or just like i feel like a lot of people <laughs> Uh, watch movies and like love isn't necessarily yeah. like the movies it and isn't. like it's a standard that mm -hmm. you think you have to find and this person could very well be like uh, asexual you exactly. know like some people don't experience romance in the same way as others you know yeah which and it's the pressure in society to find a mate to right. get married to yeah. have kids there's nothing wrong with being single single is kind of fun yeah I think if you're trying to force it, you're not going to find it. Mm -hmm. It will come. Yeah. I think part, I think some people also like, I think this is kind of the funny thing about moving, moving away from the Midwest. And, and there's a different, there's a different personality to women on the West Coast versus the Midwest. Oh, yeah. It's hard to explain, but they're just different. They just have different behaviors mm -hmm. and uh, ideals. Yeah. And, and yeah, you, this dude might very well be just in the wrong place for his personality, you know? Yeah. Or, like, if he has a really, really strong connection with his mom and his parents are together and their parents, his parents are, like, quintessential perfect couple, I feel like it, like... It makes it hard to find someone in a way because yeah. you have to, you're like, you have this grand idea and like you feel so whole and complete that mm -hmm. like finding someone, like you, they, they have to live up to that standard. Yeah. How do you feel about um, like the idea of marriage? I always think marriage kind of scares me because it's like every relationship I've been in. There's been points where I'm like, God, I love the fuck out of this person. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then it ends at some point. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, thank God I didn't propose or something. Right. And that's never really been on my mind. I've seen just a lot of bad marriages, too. Yeah, but how old are you? I'm 27. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I still got time in the bank. But you also, I feel like as you get older, you 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 start recognizing qualities in people that you're like, mm -hmm. you learn that you like. You're like, oh, now now I know I like this in a person. Yeah. And then you like learn all the things that you don't like or right. all the red flags. And For then sure. like when you find that person, you know, when you're at whatever age you are, I do think it's like, weird that it's been so normal for so long to get married for the first person you meet well or in like your 20s i feel yeah. like you shouldn't get married until you're in your, at least your 30s i like, agree with that 100%. you have like more than half of your life i don't know how people marry like a high school sweetheart because it's like first of all you don't even at that age do you really even know what you want out of out of a sexual partner out of a romantic partner like Barely having any sex, like, yeah, by then, and it's like, but also, what is marriage? Yeah, it used to be where you could get married, afford, afford a home, you need someone to take care of your kids because mm -hmm. you worked if you were a man, and that was a standard, yeah, marriage arrangement. But, like, what is marriage? Yeah. Like, I mean, like a, just a piece of paper, you mean? Well, like marriage, I guess you can look at it from a lot of viewpoints, but marriage is either like a religious mm, thing yeah, or it's a business agreement. Yeah, some people are afraid to leave a marriage because they disgrace their church or some shit. Right, so like if you're getting married because of the business agreement, mm -hmm. I don't think it's as scary. 
Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's like, okay, we're going to be together. Maybe it's not going to be, I mean, you want it to be forever, but if it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. Like I'm a child of divorce. I think divorce is very healthy uh-huh. in certain circumstances. Like it's better yeah. if you just aren't together anymore. And it doesn't need to be like this whole crazy thing, but if you want to get married to someone because you're saving a shit ton on taxes, yeah, you want to be able to like do be you, a partnership. Do you actually save a lot through taxes for marriage? I think, yeah, I think you do. Yeah, I mean, I have never been married, but <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. I heard that's a big reason people get married, but I want to know. Yeah, and it's just like you are a partnership like yeah. you own things together like if right. someone gets hurt you can go to the hospital like mm-hmm. whatever like and it's it's a big form of commitment which is beautiful i think it's yeah. so hard for anyone to commit to anything dude i think that's the scariest thing like being with someone for god forbid 50 years sounds impossible yeah that sounds terrifying yeah because how much, well, you're, you're only human mm-hmm. and like mistakes are going to be met, made. There's going to be ups and downs. But I think if you, if you find the right person, yeah. it's not as scary because like no one knows where they're going to be in 30, 40 years. But yeah. if you're with someone who's like, just like in the moment, go with the flow, like who knows, like maybe you marry someone and then in 30 years you're both like attracted to other people yeah so what open up your marriage see if that works for you i'm all for that and then if it doesn't then (laughs) it doesn't but like if you're with someone that is truly like your best friend and you can like talk about that stuff without feeling shame for it Uh i think it's like as long as you both have the same idea of what marriage is totally open yeah like if 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 you're going into a marriage with the same ideals of what a marriage is and like being best friends and and like being able to talk about that stuff yeah. um i think that's important and like before you get married maybe just go through a couple like a couple, through a checklist of things or like a couples counseling too cuz i feel yeah. like a lot of people don't know how to talk about scary things together yeah. and then they find out that they can't talk about it uh-huh in, yeah there's definitely um I mean, we all have our secrets. Yeah. You know, and when you get... And that's healthy. I, yeah. I don't think it's bad. Like, you don't... I think you should be able to share anything and not, like, lie. Yeah. No one... Like, you shouldn't hide things. But, like, it's also unhealthy to, like, know every single fucking thing yeah, and be yeah. controlling and know right. every little detail. It's like... Dude, it really bums me out when I see... Uh, um. I feel like it when when you get some some couples when they get married and I see the the man just do whatever like the woman says and just becomes totally like submissive like yeah but then you know behind her back he's like talking shit with his guy friends yeah, 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 and yeah. like it makes you know you want to rebel even more and it goes both uh-huh. ways like yeah, you've definitely. seen like controlling boyfriends who are like right who are you abusive like why are you wearing that like cover your shit up uh-huh. and like or like uh if you get a home together and you have zero say in how anything is decorated mm-hmm. or what furniture is like the woman is putting her live live laugh love shit everywhere it's oh, like, oh yeah God. no 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 i would no. never marry one of those women <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah, I think it's just about finding, like, yeah. a lover. But, like, the first and most important thing is a best friend. Yeah. I guess it's different between every couple. But, like, half of a marriage is, like, uh, sex. And then, like, half of it. If you if you hit the sex quota, mm-hmm. you know, everything is smooth sailing. And mm-hmm. at least that that's what it would be for me. I, just I was think, gonna say this yeah, is just a male perspective yeah, from a female. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like if I'm like, I just like um, just keeping everyone at a a healthy level of stress, mm-hmm. and I think sex is is the key to that. Because you know, I and when you get busy too, is fuck, and you need to like schedule sex in a yeah. marriage. Yeah, which I understand. Um, that can take some of the passion out of it, maybe for some couples, and then yeah. it's like, and then it's like, I don't. Th- is scheduling sex like 
a thing to do. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know people who do that, but I know people do that. Yeah, because I feel like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like si- I'll see you Saturday I at would six not p.m. Like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I wouldn't like that. I, it, I, and I like I would not want it to be in the same place always. Like that gets yeah, so like, boring. I'll see you at this address. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm more of a spontaneous. I'll see you at this address, our house, <laughs> our bedroom. <laughs> no, it's like Skid Row. It's yeah. really spicy. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. Like we were talking earlier, like like an asexual relationship where it's all about just um, being connected emotionally and intellectually. Mm-hmm. And that is really all it is. Yeah. I also too like when you get married. Um, there's, um, I feel like a lot of couples just stop dating. Oh yeah, you know, because yeah. they get complacent or they get busy. Well, it's it's like it never the the work never goes away. Like yeah. it's and it, work is I guess the wrong word, but it is work. It's it's like you know your career. You love your career. You're gonna put all this time and effort into your career, and you never yeah. hit a certain point in your career where you just have to stop yeah. putting in the work. Mm-hmm. Like if you love what you do, you're gonna always put the time and energy into it mm-hmm. to just keep getting better and better. Yeah. The same goes for any relationship you're in. Mm-hmm. You should treat it just as valuable as your career. And if you don't feel that way, then you're mis- like then there's something wrong. Also, too, it's like once you once you have kids. Which is fuck that. Um, yeah. Okay. Know where you stand with kids. Yeah. Don't kids free, yeah. free you. Yeah, dude. I I just think yeah the kids like you think about like uh, older couples who the kids leave the nest mm-hmm. and they're like, what do we do? You know, like how do we go back to being this this cu- normal couple who doesn't have to get up and make lunches or... Yeah, but I feel like that is what we place on ourselves as society. Like, that's, yeah. like, the the American family dynamic. But when you look at, I don't know, other cultures or even just making, making in my head the perfect scenario would just be never losing yourself. Like, mm. I want to be a fucking cool, badass mom. Yeah. That does not give a shit. I'm not going to conform to motherly things. I'm sorry. Like, I'm yeah. not going to be that person. <laughs> like, I've seen just because you become a mom doesn't mean you all of a sudden lose yourself as, like, yeah. a cool, hot right. woman. Like, you can still be that. Uh-huh. And I then think, have cool-ass kids. Totally. And then, you know, never stop dating your partner. Did Always you- make time for that. And then when they leave then fuck yeah yeah dude and then it's great because you can i don't know just something about being in my 80s and not feeling like alone like you didn't uh like you didn't miss out on anything or just having like my 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 grandkids my kids seeing them them coming over and making me food and (laughs) Like just being the did, did wild you ever, grandma. Did you ever watch Rugrats growing up? Mm-hmm. Dude, fucking Dee Dee and Stu were like can can in the canon of Rugrats. They're like thirty one years old, and I remember, and I after seeing that, I mean, growing up, I was like, Jesus, like being parents must suck so mm-hmm. hard, dude, and because they just look defeated. And just tired mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean, like, I mean, clearly people are having kids a lot later than yeah than they they were twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, you don't know it until you're in it. But just how tired kids will make you, mm-hmm. and how that would affect everything you're saying you want to do or yeah. be, or be. Yeah. Well, I feel like. It depends on what you want. Like, it, there's no longer, I don't think, no longer the pressure to have kids. Yeah. So it's like, it's, I don't Fuck know. Em. Whatever, don't have kids. But yeah, then, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I Like, I want kids. Yeah. But 
I want to make sure that I'm in a place in my career mm -hmm. that I don't have to feel like financially strapped. Right. And I can get extra help if I want to get help. Yeah. But I think when you, you just never really hit, feel like you're ever going to hit that moment. Right. You know, it's yeah. just, you got to make the decision mm -hmm. or it just happens like this poor sack of shit with uh, his, his sister-in-law. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know, man. Marriage scares me, but I respect people who do it. And uh, So do you think you're not going to get married? I don't know. I don't think I've really met the person that I want to marry. Yeah. Or have kids with yet. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah, unless you meet the person where you're like, fuck, I want to have kids with that person, you know? Yeah. Then, you, then you're in that situation. But, yeah, as a... As a as a bachelor in LA. 27. <laughs> yeah. I know, I still got some time. I'm so, so young. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. I think I got good years ahead of me and good years behind me. But do you feel like your, your career is finally hitting a stride? It's interesting. I am going to be 30 this year. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. And I'm excited. I'm going through a little quarter-life crisis. I'll admit it. Aren't we all? But um, I feel like finally at a point where I'm financially stable. Mm -hmm. And I don't give a lot of fucks. Yeah. I love in a that. lot of way. Like, I mean, of course I still do, but... I think you I stop. Don't. You stop caring a lot more as you as you age a little bit. Well, you realize that life is so short, yeah. and it was like kind of going back to that lucid dream thing. Like I'm just gonna wake up and do whatever the fuck I want to yeah. do and be whatever I want to be, and oh yeah, not resist, and also like, yeah, just I want to be that girl that I've always wanted to be, mm -hmm. and now finally I can be her. I love that. Yeah, and I'm not going to let anything get in my way because <laughs> I might die tomorrow. Were you so you were going up to Wyoming filming shit, weren't you? Mhm. Mm Is that a new like secret movie? That... Um I was like workshopping a script that I've been writing. Oh, okay. So it's kind of going to be like a teaser promo to maybe get funding for the scripts. Hell yeah. And but also it's just like an excuse to shoot on film. Like oh, you're shooting at like 16 mil? Mm -hmm. Nice, dude. Very excited. I fucking love that. Yeah. Well, I'm happy for you. Thank and you. I love that we somehow cross paths in LA. I know. Yeah. It's like a rant. Slid up in my DMs. <laughs> well, you've. Well, in a creative way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you. How did we. Uh, yeah, I was trying to take photos with you yeah, when I was building my portfolio. Me. And then you found my photos yeah. for Christine, for K Flay. Yeah. Oh, I used your photos in a treatment yeah, for without her. knowing you. And uh -huh. then you reached out and I realized the photo that I used was. Uh -huh. That's so funny. That's hilarious. I love Small that. Small world. Small motherfucking world. Yeah, that's wild. Well, um, thank you, Cass. I'm glad we fucking got to do this finally. Yes. I'm is there any not jealous of you having to edit this. Dude, that is the bane of my existence right now. Yeah, because like, how long are these supposed to be? Uh, I'm thinking about editing them down uh, to maybe an hour and a half, but I'm also... That's still too long. I No, I'm also... Do you think anyone's going to watch that? I don't fucking know, dude. I, don't I know. mean, like, I'm sure other guests, but like me thinking about me and like, no one yeah. cares about what I yeah. have to say. All right, I'll just delete everything we just yeah, did just right when you leave. A minute. Yeah. Cassie gets a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> the, si the sizzle reel. All the things that were going to get her in trouble. It's so do you have anything you want to promote or anything cool coming up? Um, just... Come see you dancing? No, no. <laughs> That's the thing I stop. I mean, like going back to being a kind of a jester of yeah. all different things. Like I had to really narrow it down. Sure. So now I'm only focusing on directing and acting. Hell yeah. Directing and acting. Used to dance, used to fire dance, all that stuff. But I don't know, it didn't feed my soul as much. Mm. And it was taking away from the time that sure. I'm now actually like seeing progress in yeah. directing. So there's not a huge career ladder for the fire dancing. No, no. 
<laughs> it was fun. It was like a good side hustle. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I just, I really want to make moves and I want to tell stories. And Well, I hope that script, the Wyoming script, yeah, does something for you. Yeah. But. I'm going to do a short film soon too. Ooh. And yeah, I think just if you want to support me. Let me know if you, you need me. to murder another. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Freddie like does murder really like well. You and your whole circle murders me in every one of your videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Evan, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna have Ed, Evan on your podcast? I should. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure he has some great political stances we can dig into. That'll be fun. Yeah, you gotta loosen him up though, because he puts his like. I know his, his stoicism. Yeah. Stealth up. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, support me by following my Instagram. Oh, at Cassie.films. Woo! Cassie Films. All right, Cassie, thank you. I'll see you soon, dude. Thanks, dude. Peace. Peace.